Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Continuing with the chapter of Siyam, the book of Siyam, Kitab Siyam, from Zad al Mustaqna of Imam al Hajjawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, last week we spoke about some of the mufattarat, some of the things which break the fast, actually the fundamental matters which break the fast. And today we have a separate section pertaining to one of the issues that break the fast. So the author, he says, Faslun. He says, section. And this section, he's going to be speaking about the issue pertaining to Jima'ah. Jima'ah is a sexual relationship that a husband and a wife have, a man and a woman, in Ramadan, or outside of Ramadan. But of course, with our situation, we're speaking in particular about the matters of sexual relationships in Ramadan and how that breaks the fast, how it affects the fast and what is the penalties, what are the penalties uh, that a person has to pay if he or she commits this act in the month of Ramadan. And the reason that the, the author, he made a fossil mustaqil, he made a separate um, section pertaining to this mufattarat, to this uh, thing which breaks the fast, is because it's so severe, it's the severest of them. So it's more severe than eating and drinking and other matters. It's more severe than putting something down your throat, uh, taking something up your nose, ear drops, anything of that nature. This, the sexual relationship that a man has with a wife uh, or anybody has in the month of Ramadan is the most severe of the matters that break the fast. And it's the severest in terms of its penalties also. And it's from the biggest of sins that one can do in the month of Ramadan. So the evidence for this, of course, is found in the Quran, in the verses of the ahkam, the rulings pertaining to fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُهُنَّ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ So now go ahead and have relationships with your partners and seek that which Allah has provided for you. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about not eating and drinking from dawn till sunset, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that now you can go and have, go ahead and have relationships with your family. So this of course shows us that within the time of fasting, it's not permitted to have relationships with one's wife or husband. The author he says, وَمَنْ جَامَأَ فِي النَّهَارِ رَمَضَانِ فِي قُبَلٍ أَوْ دُبَرٍ فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ وَالْكَفَّارَةُ Whoever has a sexual relationship with his, with his or her partner in the month of Ramadan, whether that is in the uh, front passage, the vagina, or it's in the back passage. Okay, so the back passage, of course, as we know, is something which is haram, you're not supposed to do. But even if one does do that, then it will still break the fast and there is penalties to pay. So the author is saying if a person has sexual relationships, whether through the front passage, the qubul, or the dubr, the back passage, فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ Then he has to make that day up. He and she have to make that day up. kafara, And there's also an expiation, a penalty that must be paid for this major sin that was committed. So Sheikh Mansour, Hafizullah, he says, بِإِجْمَاعِ الْعُلَمَاءِ أَنَّ مَنْ جَامَعَ فِي الْفَرْجِ فَإِنَّ صَوْمُهُ يُفْسِدْ With the agreement of all of the scholars that the one who does this act of physical penetration whilst fasting in the month of Ramadan, then his fasting is broken. أَنْزَلَ أَوْ لَمْ يَنْزِلْ أَنْزَلَ أَوْ لَمْ يُنْزِلْ Whether he ejaculates or he does not ejaculate, the fasting is still considered as having been broken. وَالدُّبْرْ كَالْقُبْلْ فِي ذَلِكْ And the front passage and the back passage are the same in the terms of ruling. لِأَنَّهُ أَحَدُ الْفَرْجَيْنِ فَأَشْبَهَ الْآخَرِ Because they are considered both to be uh, private parts, so they resemble one another in these matters. لكن ما, ما هو الجماع المفطر الموجب للكفارة؟ Sheikh Mansour is saying to us, what is the actual sexual, re, sexual act, what is considered as the act that breaks the fasting and requires the penalty, the kafara to be paid? He says, هُوَ مَا تَوَفَّرَ فِي أُمُورِ It is that which is found to have the following things contained. Number one, بِتَغْيِبِ الْحَشَفَ فِي فَرْجِ الْأَصْلِ سَوَاءً حَلَالَ أَوْ حَرَامٍ فِي قُبْلِ أَوْ دُبْرِ أَنْزَلَ أَوْ لَمْ يُنْزِلْ It is that the, uh, the male organ penetrates and goes into the female organ, whether it's an original organ or it's not an original organ. What does he mean by that? Whether it's asli or not asli, he means like the person can be a khuntha, the person can be 
a khunta and we've taken the ahkam of the khunta before. So this would mean that it's not asli if the person is a woman but has a male uh, private part um, or vice versa. So whether the person ejaculates in the front passage or the back passage or does not ejaculate, then this will break the fast and this will cause the kafara to be paid. Number two, and يكون في نهار رمضان ليخرج الصوم في غيره and that this act is to be in the in the um, days of Ramadan to exclude other types of fasting okay to exclude other types of fasting and, uh, and the third one and يكون ممن يجب عليه صيام رمضان ويلزمه الإمساك فيه ليخرج من صام وهو مما لا يلزمه ذلك and also it's pertaining to those who are fasting in Ramadan and it's obligatory upon them to withhold okay, from anything which breaks the fast. And this of course excludes those who in the month of Ramadan it's not obligatory upon them to fast. For example, the traveller for example. He may start the day of fasting but he's allowed later on once he becomes a traveller to break the fast. And also pertaining to that it should be a fasting which is in the month of Ramadan a mas'ala here to mention, as mentioned by Shaykh Amal Bahjat, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, is that, for example, uh, somebody may be making up fasting from the month of Ramadan, may have fasts that they are making up. So they are making up these fasts outside of the month of Ramadan, and it's an obligatory fast which is to be made up from the month of Ramadan. But in this day that I'm talking about, they break the fast by having sexual intercourse. Here, what's upon them? is that they have to make up the fast but there's no kafara upon them in this situation because it's not in the month of Ramadan even though it's a fast from the month of Ramadan that they are making up outside of the month of Ramadan فَإِذَا تَوَافَرَتْ هَذِهِ لَزِمَ الْمُجَامِعَ كَفَارَةً وَلَوْ كَانَ جَاهِلًا أَوْ نَاسِيًا So in this situation if these three things are present that I have mentioned in the fasting person and they engage in that sexual activity okay, of penetration then their fasting is broken and that is even if they were ignorant of the rulings or if they were forgetful of uh, what they were doing in terms of fasting and uh, question to yourselves does anybody know an evidence for this to mean that if a man is fasting and he breaks his fast by having sexual intercourse then the excuse of ignorance and compulsion and the excuse of forgetfulness is not valid here, though it's valid in all of the other things, the mufattarat, that we previously mentioned in last week's lesson. What's an evidence to show that it's not valid here in this situation? Tayyib, the ulama, may Allah have mercy upon them, they mentioned that the hadith with the Prophet ﷺ, and we'll come to this hadith in its uh, long totality later on. The Prophet ﷺ, when the man came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have destroyed myself by having intercourse with my wife in the month of Ramadan. So here, in this hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ was asking him questions, لَمْ يَسْتَفْصِلْ حَلْ كَانَ جَاهِلًا أَمْ لَا The Prophet ﷺ didn't ask him, were you aware of what you were doing? Were you aware of the ruling? Were you forced? The Prophet ﷺ didn't ask him these questions. So the ulama, they say that these excuses are not given in the situation that we are describing where a person has sexual relationships in the month of Ramadan while they are fasting. Uh, Sheikh Mansour he says, إذا وجد الجماع بهذه الشروط فإنه يترتب عليه خمسة أمور. If the sexual intercourse takes place with the three things that I just previously mentioned, the three points, uh, then five matters are to be considered. The first of them is الإثم that the person is sinful, a major sin has been committed from the worst of sins. The second of them is لزوم إمساك ذلك اليوم that the person has to continue to have إمساك. So the person has broken the fast by uh, doing that sexual intercourse they're going to have to make it up and they're going to have to pay a penalty but also they have to continue as though they are fasting for the rest of the day the third thing al kafara tu wa yati bayanuha the third thing is that they have to pay a kafara they have to pay a penalty and the description of that penalty is going to come later on in this section the fourth fasad the song dalik alyom the fourth matter is that the fasting has been uh, rendered void for that day and the fifth of them is Al-Qadha. The fifth of them is Al-Qadha, that the fast has to be made up. So these five matters are what takes place or the effect of the action of sexual relationship 
in the month of Ramadan whilst the person is fasting. Uh, to note, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala as another opinion in the madhab, he said that there is no qada upon the person. There is no qada upon the person in this situation. However, they have to make a kafara still. They have to pay the penalty, which we will discuss in a while. And this was mentioned by Shaykh Fahd al-Mutiri, hafizahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of Zad al-Mustaqna. Uh, the author, he says, وَإِن جَامَعَ دُونَ الْفَرْجِ فَأَنزَلَ If a person has sexual relationships, but it's not that of penetration into the vagina, yet, however, he still excretes semen, he still ejaculates. أو كانت مرأته معذورة Or if the woman is معذورة معذورة will explain in a bit more detail أو جامع من نوى الصوم في سفره أفطر ولا كفارة Or the person was intending to fast meaning he started the day intending to fast and then he travelled and then he had sexual relationships so in these three situations there is no kafara there is qada but no kafara so again the first of them was that somebody had a sexual relationship but didn't penetrate the vagina it was done in another way or the front or the back was not penetrated but the person uh, still ejaculated this person doesn't have to pay a kafara or a woman is ma'dhura a woman that is ma'dhura she doesn't have to pay a kafara or a person who started the day fasting then traveled and broke the fast whether it be by eating or drinking or broke the fast uh, via sexual intercourse then this person also doesn't have to pay a kafara so let's see what Sheikh Mansour uh, Hafidullah says he says ذكر المؤلف صورا من الجماع لا كفارة فيها he said the author has mentioned points and situations where there is not going to be any penalty that needs to be paid الأولى إذا وقع الجماع وإنزال دون الفرج the first of them if the person had sexual intercourse and they ejaculated, but it wasn't through the private part. It wasn't through the vagina or the back passage. فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءِ لِإِفْسَادِ الصَّوْمِ لَكِنْ لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ الْكَفَارَ So the person in this situation has to uh, make up the fast. However, they do not have to pay a kafara. وَالْإِلَّةُ أَنَّهُ فِطْرٌ بِغَيْرِ جِمَاءٍ تَامٍ And the reason for this ruling is that it is breaking the fast, but not with a complete sexual intercourse. فَأَشْبَهَ الْإِنزَالِ بِالْقُبْلَ So it's more related or it more resembles the ejaculation that can, that, that can occur from a person kissing his spouse. وَلِأَنَّ الْأَصْلِ الْعَدْمُ وَجُوبَ الْكَفَارَ And because the original uh, foundation of the ruling in these matters is that there is no kafara unless proven otherwise. And that can only happen when there is sexual relationship taking place. The second situation that the author mentioned is that if the woman was uh, sexual intercourse with her had taken place, but she was ma'dura. Uh, she was ma'dura kal mukriha. Like a person, she was compelled. She didn't want to. She tried her best to get away from her husband. She tried her best to keep him away, but she was compelled to have sexual intercourse. And also the one who is unaware or forgot that she was fasting. فَلَا كَفَارَ عَلَيْهَا So in this situation, this person, this woman, she's ma'dhura because she was compelled or she was forgetful, okay, then she is not uh, to be held account. Uh, therefore, there's no kafara upon her. All she has to do is make up the fast. So as we mentioned before, that these excuses are not given to the man, the excuse of um, ignorance or this excuse of being compelled or forgetfulness is not given to the man in this uh, area, but it is given to the woman. الثالث, المسافر إذا جامع وهو صائم. The third person who doesn't have to pay kafara, even though he had sexual intercourse and ejaculated, uh, is the one who is traveling. المسافر إذا جامع وهو صائم. Is this the one who was uh, started the journey fasting, but then broke the fast by having sexual intercourse in the journey. فلا كفارة عليه. Because he is not compelled, he is not obligated to have imsak once he becomes a traveler. And he's allowed due to the excuse of traveling, he's allowed to break his fast. And that doesn't matter whether he broke his fast with drinking or eating or sexual intercourse. In any situation, he doesn't have to make uh, a penalty, a kafara, you just have to make the fast up. The author, he says, in If a person has sexual intercourse in two days, uh, we'll break this down 
uh, point by point in detail inshallah so the author is saying if he has sexual intercourse uh, over two days or he repeats it more than once in a day and he doesn't expiate for what he has done in the day then there is one kafara, there is one penalty that needs to be paid in the second situation. What was the second situation? The second situation was that he repeated it more than once in the day. And in the first situation, which was that the person did it over consecutive days, two consecutive days, then in this situation, he has to make two penalties. So Sheikh Mansour, he said, إِذَا تَكَرَّرَ الْجِمَاءَ مِنَ الصَّائِمْ فَلَوَ حَالَتَانِ if this sexual intercourse takes place and it repeats itself, then it has two possible scenarios. In fact, there's more, but the Shaykh mentions two possible scenarios. Al-Ula, the first of them, and يُكَرِّرَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُكَفِّرُ That he does this before he expiates what he has done. He has one sexual interaction with his wife and he doesn't expiate. Then he has another sexual interaction with his wife, okay, and he doesn't expiate. بأن يقع منه الجماع ثم يقع منه أخرى وهو لم يكفر عن الجماع الأولى فهذا له حالتان. So this situation that I just mentioned, where a person has sexual intercourse and doesn't make an expiation in the same day, then has another sexual intercourse in the same day, it has two possible scenarios. أن يتكرر في نفس اليوم فتجزئه كفارة واحدة. That as we mentioned that it takes place more than once in a day so one kafara, one penalty suffices this person so whether the person does it once or twice or thrice in the day and he hasn't paid a penalty for any of them then one penalty after having done those acts suffices those acts the second scenario that the person does it over two consecutive days like he has a relationship sexual relationship in one day but he doesn't pay the penalty and then he does it again the second day so in this situation because each day is a separate independent act of worship so he has to pay a penalty for the first day where he did sexual intercourse and then he has to pay a penalty also for the second day where he did the sexual intercourse, okay? Now, the author he says, وَإِن جَامَعَ ثُمَّ كَفَرَ ثُمَّ جَامَعَ فِي يَوْمِهِ كَفَارَةٌ ثَانِيَةٌ If a person, in another scenario, he has a sexual relationship with his wife and then he pays the penalty, he makes the kafara then that's done and dusted with. But then if he does it again in the same day, then he also has to pay another kafara. So after having paid the penalty in one day, if he does it again, then he has to pay another penalty. Sheikh Mansour says, Athania, the second scenario, and yet al ba'dama kafar an al awwal. So he repeats the act of intercourse after having expiated for the first one. Therefore, he has to pay a second penalty. Whether or not that the jima took place again in another day or in the same day. So, again, as I already explained, Sheikh Mansur, he said, uh, in this situation, this scenario that we're explaining that if a person, he has sexual relationship with his wife in one day and then he pays the penalty for that day. But then the same day, in the same day, he has another sexual relationship with his wife. For that second relationship, he also has to pay a penalty. Okay? So the author, he says, And also, if a person uh, makes jama, has a second relation, has a sexual relationship, whilst he is supposed to be withholding himself uh, by making imsak. Let's take an explanation. Man lazimahu al-imsak fi dhalika al-yawm fa laysahu al-jima' fihi wa yadkhulu fihi unas. Whoever it's upon them to withhold from eating and drinking, then this person is not permitted for them to have sexual relationship. This is different to the previous matters. Why? Because we'll see. Al-awwal. من لم يعلم برؤية الهلال إلا في النهار أو قامت البينة على دخول شهر في أثناء النهار وكان الرجل قد جامع زوجته أول النهار فعليه الإمساك بقية اليوم وعليه القضاء وكفارة. So the Sheikh Mansour حفظ الله he gives an explanation. He said that an example is uh, as we mentioned last week or the week before actually pertaining to the moon sightings that it could be that a people or a person 
he doesn't get to know about it being the month of Ramadan has started. So half of the day, he's already started uh, the day out by eating and drinking. And then someone comes and tells him midday that actually now we've just had news that the month of Ramadan, the moon of Ramadan was sighted last night. So today is the first day of Ramadan. So this person, even though he only got to find out midday, but early on in the day before midday, he had a sexual relationship with his wife. So he has to now refrain from anything which breaks the fast for the rest of the day. And he also has to make up the day. And as well, he has to make a kafara. Al-illa, what is the illa? What is the reason? Anna jima'ahu sara fi nahari Ramadan. Fi yawmin yalzimuhu al-imsaq fihi. That his sexual relationship ended up being on a day which ended up being the first day of the month of Ramadan. So in this situation, he's making him sirk, he has to withhold the rest of the day as though he's fasting, not eating and drinking or sexual relationships or anything else that breaks the fast. And even though his sexual relationship took place before he knew that it was a fasting day from Ramadan, that doesn't matter, he still has to make up the day and he still has to pay the kafara. A thaniya, a second situation. Man ujiza lahum al-fitr awla nahar li'udhr Those who were able or permitted by the sharia to not eat and drink, to not be fasting due to an excuse in the early part of the day. Like the one who was sick, but then later on he became cured. Like the one who was ha'id, the one who was menstruating, but later on her menstruation finished. Like the one who was traveling, but during the day he ended up reaching his destination. So these people, once their excuses for not fasting have been removed, then they have to continue with the imsak, the withholding. Even though the imsak is not valid. It's not counted for them as a valid fasting. And if they end up, once the excuses have gone, if they end up having sexual relationship, even though in the beginning of the day they had an excuse like the traveler, like the sick person who later on became cured in the day. So these person in the early part of the day, they were excused. But now that their excuse has gone, so they are not allowed to have jama'ah. And if they did have jama'ah, then they have to pay a kafara for this jama'ah. Okay? So two scenarios to the same coin, to the same ruling that we were mentioning. The first of them is that a person he didn't know. Okay? Or uh, he became a person whom uh, fasting was obligatory upon uh, later on in the day. Okay? Like his excuse has been removed. So here, whether the jama'ah was before uh, before he came to know that it's the day of Ramadan or it was after his excuse was removed like the traveler became a resident and um, they had jama'ah so then in both cases they will still have to pay a kafara okay, for this jama'ah this is what the author is saying the author he said وَمَنْ جَامَعَ وَهُوَ مُعَافًا ثُمَّ مَرِضَ أَوْ جُنَّ أَوْ سَافَ لَمْ تَسْخُدْ whoever has a sexual relationship with their partner and they were in a normal healthy state but then they became sick later on after having the sexual intercourse. So they're in a normal healthy state. They're supposed to be fasting. Okay. They're supposed to be fasting. And um, they had sexual relationship whilst they were supposed to be fasting because they had no excuse preventing them from fasting. But then later on, they became sick, for example. Or they became unconscious. Or they traveled. Lam taskut. So later on, after the sexual intercourse took place in that same day, an excuse came to them which could prevent them from fasting, which prevents them from fasting, right? So by virtue of the fact that they did have the sexual relationship before the excuse, they still have to pay the kafara. The kafara is not removed from them. Tayyib. And uh, Sheikh Ahmed Khalil says clearly, بِأَنَّ وُجُوبُ الْكَفَارَ سَابِقٌ لِزَوَالِ تَكْلِيفٍ because the wujub, the obligation of the kafara, okay, was before the removal of the taklif, before the removal of the responsibility, before the removal of their responsibility. So in any case, the reality of this ruling that, that the author is mentioning is that if somebody has jama'ah after, uh, somebody has jama'ah whilst they didn't have the excuse to break the fast, so they weren't traveling, they were healthy, there was nothing preventing them from fasting. So in that part of the day, 
they had jama, they had sexual relationship. Now in the second part of the day, they ended up being people of excuse, either by traveling or either by becoming sick or either by losing their mind or any other such matter, which gives them an excuse not to fast. So regardless of what happens in the second day, they still, second part of the day, they still have to pay the kafara, they still have to pay the penalty because it took place, the act took place before they came into the second part of the day, which gave them an excuse. So the excuse for them is not valid with regards to their kafara. وَلَا تَجِبُ الْكَفَارَةُ بِغَيْرِ الْجِمَاءِ فِي صِيَامِ رَمَضَانِ And the author is reiterating an important point that uh, there is no kafara for the person who has sexual relationships if it's not a fasting in the month of Ramadan. So as Sheikh Mansour he says, أَشَارُ الْمُؤَلِّفِ إِلَّا مَسَأَلَةِ الْكَفَارَةِ مَتَى تَجِبْ That the author is alluding to when is the kafara obligatory upon who. فَقَرُرَ أَنَّ الْكَفَارَ لَا تَجِبُ عَلَى مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ مُفَطَّرَاتِ إِلَّا so the author has concluded and substantiated that this kafara, this penalty, is not obligatory except for the one who is as following. Man waqa'a fil jima' The one who has fallen into sexual relationship. And secondly, وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي النِّهَارِ رَمَضَانِ And secondly, that was in the day from one of the days of Ramadan. And thirdly, وَكَانَ مِمَّنْ يَلْزِمُهُ الْإِمْسَاكِ فِيهِ And thirdly, was from those whom it was obligatory upon him to observe the day as a fasting person, mean that he wasn't sick, he wasn't, he hadn't lost his mind, he wasn't a traveller, uh, and anybody else who, who it's allowed for them uh, not to fast. Well, illa and the reasons, reasoning given, anna ghayr al jima' lam yarid fihi nas that other than jima', other than sexual relationship in that day of Ramadan, uh, there is not an evidence from the book or the sunnah uh, or the statement of the companions or a qiyas or anything else. Uh, sorry, not a qiyas, or a statement of the companions, or a hadith, or something from the Qur'an, a nas, which shows that there is a kafara, there is a penalty, for other than jima', for other than the one who has sexual relationships. وَقِيَاسُ الْمُفَطَّرَاتِ عَلَى الْجِمَاءِ لَا يَصِحْ And as Sheikh Mansour says that to make qiyas on other mufattarat uh, with jima', with sexual relationship, is not uh, correct. It's not correct to do qiyas in this matter. وَلَمَّا بَيْنَهُمَا مِنَ الْفَرْقِ Because due to the fact that there's so much variances between the realities of other mufattarat and this issue of jima, فَوَجَبَ أَلَّا تَجْبِ الْكَفَارَةَ لِعَدْمَ الدَّلِيلَ عَلَيْهَا Therefore we cannot obligate a kafara for anything else in the matters which break the fast except for sexual relationship as we have described it. The author he says وَهِيَا إِتْقُ رَقْبَةٍ And it is to free a slave. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصُيَامُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ And if the person cannot find a slave, then, or is unable to pay for the slave, then in this situation the person fasts two consecutive months. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطَعْ فَإِطْعَمُ سِتِّينَ مِسْكِينَ And if unable to do that, then the person has to feed 60 um, poor people. Sheikh Mansour says, أَشَارَ إِلَى خِصَالِ الْكَفَارَ وَهِيَا that the author Al-Hijawi has alluded to the uh, categories and the types of kafara, the types of penalties and they are as follows the first of them to free, uh, to free a slave who is a believer, a believing slave, male or female Salima min al-Uyub al bil amal and this, this slave that is going to be freed should not have any defect which prevents them from being the type of slave that can be used for working فَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ رَقَبَا And if the person cannot find a slave to free أو لم يجد المال الكافي بعد النفقات الشرعية الوحواج الأصلية Or the person doesn't have enough money after having fulfilling his uh, obligatory duties upon his family as, as defined by the Sharia And um, then this person doesn't have to buy and free a slave If the person doesn't have enough money after feeling the fundamental necessity spending needs of his himself and his family and the person has no money left over then the person doesn't have to go and take a loan to buy a slave so then he moves on to the second uh, penalty if he's not able to do the first which is to free the slave then he moves on to do the second penalty which is to uh, fast two consecutive months two consecutive whole months without any interruption. If there's an interruption when it's, which is not excused by the Sharia, then the two months will start again from whenever that interruption took place. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعَ الصَّوْمُ If the person is not able to fast, 
because maybe the person has a weakness of body or because the person has a, a, a extremely strong sexual drive and the person is unable to control themselves with regards to their sexual desires then they move on to the third penalty the third penalty is miskina, that the person has to pay the feeding of 60 poor people that the person has to feed 60 people a food, a meal which is considered to be an, accept, an acceptable staple meal uh, from the people befitting the people of that country or that land the amount of that meal should be mud of bur should be two handfuls of wheat or nisfu sa min ghayrihi or it should be four handfuls of wheat nisfu sa min uh, other than wheat four handfuls other than wheat and if it's wheat two handfuls the evidence of this is in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim from Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal baynama nahnu julusun in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam idha ja'ahu rajulun faqal when we were sitting one time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, halaktu, O Prophet of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I have destroyed myself. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Malik, what's up with you? What's your situation? Qala waqa'tu ala imra'ati wa ana sa'imun. He, the man, said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I fell upon my wife, meaning I had sexual intercourse with her whilst I was fasting. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, هَلْ تَجِدُ رَقَبَةً تُعْتِقُهَا Do you find a slave that you can free? قَالَ لَا قَالَ فَهَلْ تَسْتَطِيُوا أَن تَسُومُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ The man said no to the issue of being able to free a slave. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then guided him to another penalty. He said, are you able to fast two months consecutively? The man, he said no. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَهَلْ تَجِدُ إِطْعَامَ سِتِّينَ مِسْكِينَ Are you able to find the food to feed 60 people? Are you able to feed 60 people? The man, he said, no. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَكَثَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وسلم. So Abu Huraira said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent for a while and sitting around for a while. فَبَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ أُوْتِيَا النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وسلم بِعَرَقٍ, بعرق فِيهِ تَمَرٍ Whilst we were in that situation, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, with a container containing dates. Qal, Aina Sail. The Prophet وسلم, said, Where is the one that was asking me the rulings pertaining to his situation of having sexual relationship with his wife whilst fasting? Faqala Anna. He said, Me, O Messenger of Allah, it's me. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Khudha fatasaddaq bihi. Fatasaddaq bihi. The Prophet وسلم, gave him this container of dates. He said, Take it and go ahead and make sadaqah and give it in expiation of what you have done, meaning feed the poor with it. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ So the man, he looked at the Prophet وسلم, and he said, أَعَلَىٰ أَفْقَرَ مِنِّي يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Upon, shall I spend it upon someone who is poorer than me, O Messenger of Allah? فَوَاللَّهِ مَا بَيْنَ لَا بَتَيْهَا For I swear by Allah, there is none between the two mountains. يُرِيدُ الْحَرَّتَيْنِ أَهْلُ بَيْتٍ أَفْقَرُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ There is none between these two mountains who is poorer than me and my and who has a poorer family than I have. فَضَّحِكَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم of mercy, he laughed. حَتَّى بَدَتْ أَنْيَابُهُ Until the canine teeth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, due to the wideness of his laugh, became apparent. ثُمَّ قَالْ أَطْعِمْ أَهْلَكَ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him, Go ahead and feed your family. Go ahead and take this and feed your family. The author, he says, فَإِن لَمْ يَجِدْ سَقَطَتْ If the person, he doesn't find the ability to feed 60 poor, then the, as we just mentioned in passing, then the ruling is that it's not now obligatory upon this person anymore. إِذَا لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ عَلَىٰ خِصَالِ الْكَفَارَةَ ثَلَاثَ فَإِنَّ الْكَفَارَةَ تَسْخُطْ بِالْعَجْزِ If the person is unable to do these categories of expiation that we mentioned, the three penalties, then the person is considered as being one who is unable due to inability and the penalty has been dropped from him. And that is because the obligations obligations in the religion are removed from a person who is unable to do them. However, if the short time passes between him having committed the act and then becoming financially well off enough to pay the penalty, then this person has to pay the penalty. Even though at the time 
of after having finished the act of uh, sexual relationship was fasting in the day of Ramadan he was poor and he was unable to do the fasting or the freeing of the slave or the feeding of 60 people starting with the freeing of the slave then the two months consecutively of fasting and then the feeding of 60 people if he's unable to do any of that then it was removed from him however if in a short time frame he then finds that he has the financial or the health capability or whatever to do any one of those three categories then it's upon him to do that لو وجدها قريب أخرجها كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لرجل خذها فتصدق به وكونه صلى الله عليه وسلم أمره أن يأكل ذلك طعام أهل بيته ولم يأمره بالكفارة عوضا عن ذلك دليل على سقوطها مع العجز so as we mentioned that this hadith that we just mentioned that if a person is fully unable then the hadith shows that uh, there's no kafara upon the person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best any clarity and correctness was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything which was not clear and a mistake was from myself and shaitan if you have any questions on these matters that we have taken then feel free if not we will meet in another session inshallah ta'ala طيب Jazakumullah khair. May Allah make this heavy new scale of good deeds. And we'll see you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.